Well, welcome to the Friday Bubble. Today I'm transporting you to Menil sur Roger in the Côte de Blanc, to Delamotte. Um, many of you might know the name. Uh, it's the sister house of Champagne Salon. It has a fascinating history. They started making Champagne under the Delamotte name back in 1760, so a long, long time ago. I think its history becomes a little bit more exciting from 1988, when Bernard de Nomacourt, who was the founder of Laurent Perrier, uh, bought uh, the house along with Salon. And since that time, Didier de Pond has managed the two houses side by side, and they literally are next door neighbours. Today, I thought it'd be exciting to show you the 2014. Um, Essie, tell us a little bit about uh, the Côte de Blanc in the 2014 vintage. Yes, so this is actually a very interesting blend because it is a blend of all the six Grand Cru's of the Côte de Blanc. It right. rarely actually happens because there is uh, one one of them, uh, the northernmost Uari, mm -hmm. uh, which is such a small appellation that you often don't often see it in, in, in blends. But in this case, now this is the third vintage where where um, Delanot have included all the six in them. Right. But definitely the um, the core, the heart of the blend is, of course, uh, Le Menil sur Roger, their own uh, village, Auger and Avis. <laughs> so more that sort of little bit, maybe more the powerful, uh, firm right. structured parts of the, um, the Côte de Blanc with, um, with 20% um, of each of those uh, vintages. And yes, 2014 was a very eventful <laughs> year in the vineyards. Um, there was a lot of um, disease pressure towards the end of the summer, but then, then finally um, we had a very uh, a glorious, glorious autumn, and uh, which saved the, the quality of, of the, the grapes. I like the style of the vintage more than I was expecting to, so right. it's more again on this classic front with nice brisk acidity and quite forward lush fruitiness. The fascinating thing here is um, Delamont and Salon actually, are all made by the same winemaker uh, who looks after um, Laurent Perrier. Uh, Michel Falconer is retiring over the next few years and they have now appointed a new winemaker, Maximilien Bernardor, and um, he will be making the wines uh, going forward. So like um, the, the house style really of the group, everything is made reductively and um, so there's no oak contact here at all. So you should just get that purity of, of delicious Chardonnay fruit. Here is really lemony with also this sort of lime or yuzu twists, even mm -hmm. a touch of this sort of beautiful green. Uh, green um, aromatics, um, very, very clean and precise, uh, and there's a beautiful smoky, reductive um, note to the nose. We thought we'd have a little bit of fun today. Um, we normally taste the, the Grand Champagne, uh, the layman. Chamise Grand Champagne glass. Um, these are the mouth blown ones, which are super fine, very, very delicate. We're also going to taste in the Synergy um, from Lehman, which is just that little bit sort of wider. It'll give the wine, which I think might be a little bit tight yet. It's still very, very young. I think it might give it the chance to express itself. So uh, 2014, fruit forward, Essie. Yes, um, yeah, it does open up a little bit in the in the bigger uh, glass, aromatically more more softer and also more yellow fruit um, coming out. Mm. It's very tight on the palate still in this uh, this uh, this glass, but let's see. It's really lemony and um, there's a beautiful texture in it. It's really chalky, um, and then this this little lift of salinity at the end. I haven't really had a chance to taste in the bigger glass. Mm. Yeah, it actually gets uh, gains in sort of uh, this sort of burgundy and gravitas a mm -hmm. little bit in in the bigger glass. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I prefer it now in this one. Actually, I do. I, in fact, it was so good I swallowed that <laughs> mouthful from the bigger glass. Um, I can see some of the tropicalness coming out now. There is that roasted, uh, what I call barbecued pineapple in there. Mm. Really, rather beautiful in that yes. in that bigger glass. It's perhaps a bit constrained because it's very youthful at the moment here. Definitely benefits from from space, there is like a smokiness that you would almost think has a little touch of oak in there. But, yeah. but what a gorgeous wine. I must say it's beautiful, you know. I loved already the eight and 12 right. of, of the Delamotte Blanc de Blanc, but this, um, you know, 
This is, is not second to them. I think it's gorgeous. Essie has scored this um, in her in her last um, round of tastings. Ninety four out of a hundred. So it's had some some really um, some really good fruit and some of the things you've just told me actually. Mm. Uh, good. I'm uh, consistent. Of uh, what you wrote. Um, last time 6.5 grams and that seems to really suit it yeah of dosage well um we normally do which one are we taking to lunch <laughs> well <laughs> actually i'm going to take this glass to lunch because i think it's I'm showing take this one. it's showing the wine off much better thank you essie thank you um and i hope you all get a chance to try this lovely delamotte from 2014 sometime soon cheers